Hi, I'm David Bissell, and I'm here to talk about my paper published in Antipode that's called The Anaesthetic Politics of Being Unaffected. So many of us have likely ordered a meal from companies like Uber Eats or Deliveroo at some point over the past few years, and certainly many more people have been doing so during the pandemic. But the delivery riders, those people who bring us our meals, are in a really challenging situation with low and inconsistent pay and poor conditions. Now, labour geographers have told us a great deal about the political economy of these delivery platforms, highlighting the difficult legal status of these supposedly freelance workers because they're often not recognised as employees of the platform companies that they work for. And that's obviously an important part of the story here, but this work has told us much less about the bodily experiences that this work involves. So as a cultural geographer, I've been really interested in understanding the embodied and performative dimensions of this work. While research on worker agency has recently focused in on thinking about workers changing capacities for acting, so for doing things, this paper argues that there is a flip side to this focus on active capacities, which concerns workers' bodily capacities to be affected, so their capacities to sense and to feel. So what I'm interested in doing in this paper is to think about the concept of anaesthesia, and I understand this as a reduction in capacity to be affected. In the paper, I outline two different ways of thinking about the politics of anaesthesia, on one hand as constraining, and on the other hand as enabling. And I think where cultural geographers have certainly begun to think about the constraining aspects of anaesthesia, much less has been said about its potentially more enabling role. So I draw on qualitative research with gig workers in the city of Melbourne here in Australia. I did interviews lasting between 40 minutes and two hours with a diverse sample of 30 gig workers involved in the movement of people, goods or services in the city. I found three interview encounters with delivery riders especially intriguing in the way that they continued to provoke questions for me about how they were navigating the challenges of gig work at the level of sensation. But what really stayed with me from these encounters was how each of these men seemed to distance and detach themselves from their stories of day-to-day -day work in spite of the immersive demands of storytelling. In the paper, I draw out three kinds of what I call anaesthetic detachment that these encounters prompted for me. Rather than a politically dubious constraint, I think that anaesthetic seems to play a much more enabling role for these men. Developing Lauren Ballant's writing on the enabling dimensions of unfeeling, I, I argue that concealment, projection and resignation can be understood as specific forms of anaesthesia that can protect bodies who are subjected to depleting forces. So zooming out, although feeling has begun to be addressed in cultural geographic research on diverse aspects of economic life, much less has been said about how being affected can be dampened and numbed in different ways. So in response, what I've tried to do in this paper is explain how the concept of anaesthetics could be a really helpful way of exploring the politics of being unaffected. Politically, such anaesthetic experiences, I think, rebut the presumptions that bodies always have a sufficiently heightened capacity to be affected so that they can evaluate their situations in an ongoing manner. And I think this is one of the central assumptions that a lot of uh, field work, in a lot of the field work we do. But what if simply this is not the case? So I think anaesthesia challenges us to consider the kinds of hurt and depletion that might be going on for people, but might not be necessarily registered in sensation. Now, I really hope that this paper invites other critical geographers to consider the political and ethical implications of intensities of unfeeling in relation to economic life, where numbing and desensitisation are both products of and responses to different circumstances. And I hope too that such work can give us a clearer picture of the bodily challenges that gig workers are going through.